intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about camping in the low to mid 40s and talking about strategies, things you're going to want to accomplish, things you're going to need, cost and everything. It's going to be a lot. And I know this video was supposed to come out a long time ago, but with economy updates coming here in the past six months and various things being updated in the game, I've, I've changed some of it a little bit. And, you know, me and DJ have been comparing notes for several months for this one. I'll give you DJ's opinion on some of this as well as we discuss. It'll be a little bit different than we did for like our camping at 39 video, but we'll cover all of that in this video, including why some of the things have gotten changed. But before we get too deep into it, real quick, we have to give a shout out because this video is actually sponsored. Yeah, and it actually is important for Star Trek Fleeking Man people. So pay attention. Roll it. Hey there, everybody. Today's video is sponsored by Amazon, Amazon Coins, and the Amazon App Store, where you can now take this game, Star Trek Fleet Command, download it to the Amazon App Store, and get big savings on all of your purchases up to 20%. We gotta love those big savings. And if you are an Android, Amazon Fire Tablet, etc. user, you can download the Amazon Store for free and get started. Now, the 20% savings sounds too good to be true. And let me tell you, it's not. If you buy the coins, these are the savings you're getting. And we know how things are in this game. If you want to progress bigger, faster, stronger, particularly on the faster side, investing in your account is a way to do that. And if you can get a 20% kickback, as you can see here, why not take advantage of it? Because all you got to do is click that content creator link down in the description, you know, comment section, take advantage of this. And this is something I've been waiting on for a long time. Amazon Coins has been available for all kinds of different games. And Three easy steps. All you gotta do, get the coins for yourself, saving up to 20% on your purchases, then download the game in the Amazon App Store, which again, Fire Tablets, Androids, etc. And then last but not least, go in and spend your coins as you normally would in your regular store. That's how you get your savings. So whether you're buying an Elite Battle Pass or whether you're just getting that new ship refit for your D4, doesn't matter. You're gonna wanna get it to the Amazon App Store using Amazon Coins. Shout out. Woo! All right, definitely encourage y'all to check out that Amazon Coins offer here with Star Trek Fleet Command because 20% as a discount is the best offer currently available in any of the stores. So let's get into starting camping. And I will admit that this is going to be a little bit different than how we did it before. I mean, when we've talked about camping before, we did like a whole checklist. Hey, complete this, 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 and this. And, and I will go over things that myself and Ultimate DJ agree that you need to do. But it's also discussing the style because the 40s and how you live in the four-star economy is very different than how you live in the two-star and three-star economy. And let me just go ahead and say this, that if you are a spender in the game, and I'm not saying a high-level spender, but if you spend more than about $120 a month, so if you just buy the Battle Pass and the Elite Battle and the, the Elite Monthly, then anything at that level or above Camping in the 40s might not be the most advantageous route for you to take. And I'm simply pointing that out because unlike the 30s and the 20s, packs actually evolve every level in the 40s. And that's actually a pretty big deal. So like when we talk about what it costs to get to say, oh, I don't know, level 42. And I've talked about that, how that was a big goal for me. Well, I'll put it on the screen for you. This was the total cost just for the defense platform to go from 39 to 41 to prep you for 42. You're going to need 51 billion par steel and 21.6 thousand uncommon four star gas. So this was just go from 39 moving into the 40s. And that's just part of it. This is just the defense platforms that you need to upgrade. So cost was pretty heavy. So if you could augment that with better returns in things like the, you know, the, the pack purchases, then camping might not be as advantageous. Now there's still some things that obviously you're going to want to do like scrapping repeatedly you're just gonna be scrapping ships a lot y'all i mean i really can't stress enough the importance of scrapping and to this point i think i've scrapped four of each type and it, that might be a low number and what i mean each type i mean mayflower legionary etc talking about going into the 40s remember that checklist we did but let, let's look at some numbers here put this on the screen these are raw costs i'll show you because we're going to focus on mostly camping when to camp in the 40s etc look at the raw cost from going 39 to 42 because that's what we're really going to focus on. For me, if I'm talking about camping, and if you are not a heavy spender, because if you're a heavy spender, you can really kind of go level by level. But if you're a light spender or free to play player, camping can be very advantageous. And you're basically going to do a similar strategy than what we talked about in the late 20s and early 30s, which is called soft camping. 
soft camping is not built upon the idea like we looked at before uh you know when we made our big videos about camping at 39 thing where it's literally based around the idea of we're going to make this big checklist hit all these things and move this is more based around the idea of what do things cost and just to remind you here was by the way this is what we did for level 40 plus moving on for 39 me and dj had this whole list like you need this amount of steel you need to scrap this many mayflowers and d3s and we both agreed to have at least tier 8 enterprise slash auger and max and your vidar your stella we have this huge checklist of things and not that this is bad i actually still believe that this is a very accurate video even though things have changed with the, the addition of the franklin a and the fuchsia and the economy updates it all depends on where your account is at in the game swap them back so like this was your raw cost to get 39 to 42 you can see this is just the operations building does include all the different buildings that you need to get there so the way you operate in this level of the game is very different than how you would operate as a lower level player in the 30s and 20s and that's very important to understand so when i'm talking about soft camping i'm saying we're going to get to a set level we're going to focus on the important things and then move on to the next level so that we can continue to grow because one thing that you'll notice in the four star economy is events pay out a lot more with smaller brackets depending on you know uh, what type of event we're talking about but there are things that you need to make sure that you focus on especially now that we have at the making of this video eight research trees now some of this is good like the new star base tree one of the things that i love that it has is right in here crystal efficiency gas efficiency and ore efficiency researches so if you're you know a player in the game moving the 40s these are obviously important anything that has this little dollar sign is just critical to your gameplay because that means you're going to save resources or save materials and obviously that plays a big role of success and here's why it's such a big deal to do that i'm going to put on the screen this right here this is the total cost using Spox Club to go from 42 to 44. So when I'm talking about camping, I'm talking about camping at level 42, camping at 44, and then 46. So we're talking low to mid tier 40s. We'll talk about later in the game because 46, I really won't push to 49 and 50, which is the biggest you know jump in the game so far. But we'll camp at these 42, 44, 46. So 42 to 44 is right here on your screen. On the left side is the base cost. On the right side is my cost based on my research. And some of you might have better research because if you remember what area has Rev failed to give a lot of love to? Yeah, y'all remember, it's it's Outlaw. Rev's failed to give a lot of, like the video if you've actually done Outlaw research that Rev hasn't. My M score is still 61, which is pathetic for level 43, but avoid the mistakes that I've made by ignoring certain pieces of the game. It's okay. Rev's not mad at you. So this gives you an idea of cost. Like you look at the par steel, I only need about 62 billion when I went from 42, I'm heading to 44 now, and that wasn't a really difficult part, but the uncommon refined ore, you see I need 24,000. Well, I spent it, that was almost all in the ops building and that was good to go, research helped that. So it's not that you need to say max everything, because for example, if you remember the checklist, we talked about level 39 checklist, one of the big things that me and DJ both agreed upon is like, hey, those big faction ships, you really kind of need to max them out or take them to tier eight that is not the case here if you're in the 40s if you're camping you do not need to take an uncommon 42 ship to tier nine you do not if anything tier five tier six is plenty remember the iss jelly here iss jelly being tier five literally doesn't need to go up any higher like tier five jelly from your level 39 checklist is the exact same for your 42 checklist and your 44 checklist the only thing that you're really thinking about when it comes to those tiers is the warp range of those ships. That's what matters. Now, one of the reasons that we're choosing 42 as our first stop in our soft camp spot is you get plus 10 warp. This is critical, y'all. There is a mission called Angel in Disguise. You have to get level 42 before you can actually start doing it, but you're going to then get the ability to do this research right here, the particle you need for the part one, and then you can use dilithium to get part two and warp range. This is huge. I have plus 10 warp range at level 42 based on this research. This is why we don't camp at 41 and we don't camp at 40. We go 39 to 42. And then you can guess part of my reasoning here, 44 is why we'd go again. Now, many of you are going to ask, well, why 42 and not 43? The singular answer for me comes down to leaderboards. And if you notice leaderboard brackets, most of the time, especially with the leaderboards for officers and stuff, for the low 40s, it's 
40 to 42. That is your leaderboard bracket. And the tricky thing is, it's very, very cheap to go to 43. It basically costs nothing more to go to 43 versus going to 42. But the key is, it's going to change your event structure. So it's really different because I know for a long time we talked about camp at the odd levels in the 30s and the 20s. You want to camp at an odd level, 25, 35, 39. That's not the case in the 40s. If you're a low spinner or free to play, you have to be very tactical in your choices. So you want to get to 42 for those warp range and you want to stay at 42 so that you can get those efficiency researches caught up before you make another push, but also so that you can also still participate in leaderboard events. It's always best, in my opinion, to sit at the top of a leaderboard bracket than at the bottom. It's one of the reasons that we pushed level 39 so heavily, because at 39, you were at the top of a leaderboard bracket. Now at 42, you'll be at the top of a leaderboard bracket. So the, the whole idea of camping, when we were making our list, you don't have a list at 42. You have basically a few key points you need to focus on. A lot of the things that you accomplished at level 39 will be fine at 42. Your tier eight auger, perfectly okay. Your tier five ISS jelly, perfectly a-okay. That's fine. The 15 to 20 rare officers you've maxed, fine at 42. Five epics maxed, fine at 42. Those things don't need to change. What you do need to focus on heavily, research, get anything that has to do with efficiency maxed out as soon as you can, especially because we have these new research trees with uh, the star base and we're up to eight now. When we made that video last year, I think we were only at six, but we have the territory tree. We didn't have starships yet, didn't have the star base and the idea of away teams, and everything was still brand new. So when you're going through these trees, make sure you're looking for anything that has the dollar sign efficiencies, efficiencies, efficiencies. So those are, those are just very critical. I can't stress it enough. And those are like the little cheat sheet to know, do I focus on this research or not? And then moving into 44, let's talk about the price of going to 44. It is a little bit beefier than 42. So this is the cost from 44 to 46. 46 is big because, well, you're finally gonna get a really, really good ship. This doesn't mean the uncommon ships of 42 are skippable. It's up to you on whether you do that. I got mine, I'm very happy with that decision. But the 46s are probably the, the, the real good meat grinders of the 40s and even into the low 50s. They're gonna be your primary hostile grinders, they're gonna be your primary PvP ships, and they're gonna be your primary armada ships, even more so than the epics. Now the here tricky part is, it's 500,000 faction credits to unlock one of those ships. You're gonna need the rep, which is 400 something million, was it 400 million? Uh, well, I'll pull it up here in just a second here in the background. 400 million, then you're gonna need 500,000 faction credits. That's something in addition to these things on the screen that you need to save up for. Now the rep wise, uh, here's my Romulan that commended glorified. So yeah, well, it's like 460 million or something. Y'all can do the quick math if you want to. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. But once you make it there, the key is getting that ship at 46, because you're also gonna need all this right here. See, one of the reasons that we're leveling you up and we're trying to push you to 44, because the events and the battle pass all start paying, start paying out more. Remember the battle pass gets better as you level up, the packs get better as you level up. And because it's doing it at a per level basis, as opposed to a every two level basis in the 20s and 30s, it makes leveling up quicker, more advantageous. Now you still want to, and DJ was really, really adamant about this when he was making his notes, that especially by the time you hit 45, you have got to focus on making sure that efficiency researches are maxed out to your ability. If you do not, you will cost yourself a ton in resources. And what do we mean by that is, the 45 to 46 jump is incredibly expensive in the game. What you see right here is mostly going 45 to 46. 44 to 45 is not that pricey materials wise and resource wise, but it sure the heck is when it comes to 45. That's the big one jump. So once you get there, you need to be mindful of that and focus on all of these different factors. Also keep in mind that at warp 44 or, or love 44, you have more of those warp researches to give you more warp range. Now my Valdor in the background here, I'll show you at tier five right now where I have my Valdor and you can take a look at the upgrades window that I have not upgraded any part on it yet, but my Valdor has a warp range of 150 with my researches that I've done plus its natural state. That is significant. There's plenty for you to do your D space grinding as you prepare for 46 and all of these things. Usually I know many of you are hoping for a, a straight list, but it's not about list here. 
there's some key points efficiency researches getting your 42 if you want but not having to worry about it. you don't have to get it to level eight before you start leveling up the missions for warp range very very critical especially ships and that's about it getting through your events now if you want to be more pvp focused then you're going to want to level up some of your ships but remember when dj and i told you to get that auger and that enterprise to tier eight well guess what in the low 40s they're still probably your best pvp ships and your most efficient pvp ships especially with the new officers that have come out with strike team and other strike team officers that are coming out of the game so it's a little bit different here we're talking about soft camping at 42 44 46 but this strategy is far more advantageous for you as a player than sitting at 42 for say a year like many of you ended up sitting at 39. Now, you probably won't sit at 39 in a year now if you went back through the process like I did. Some people are only doing it for four months or so, which is perfectly fine. It's a lot easier to accumulate these resources. But now it's all about how quickly can you move and how efficient can you be in that movement, especially if you're a light spender. Free to play, it will take you a little bit longer, but if you notice all these different materials that were on the screen, it's not that hard to get them if you're doing the scrapping method that we talk about and completing events. The four-star economy does pay out a little bit better than the three-star. It's several times factor better. Still going to take you a lot of time, but hopefully this video helps you out. Hopefully you got an idea of how the world is a lot different in the 40s versus the 30s and the 20s. And let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Live long and prosper. Stay safe for these space cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next one. So glad that you were here. We out of An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.